as many of you know, um, this was the uh, victim affidavit here with a very intricate long template of um, almost 100 pages here and detailed explanatory notes. And now, um, as of uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, the 4th of June, there have been now a total of 15 affidavits already submitted. Okay, so you can find them down here. I'm just scrolling through them very, very quickly. If you're wondering how to get uh, to these pages, they are um, in the description below the video. But you can also come here by just um, going to my website, which is stop007.org. And then you scroll down and it's these first two links, okay? And the third link is now the press release that I have um, sent around today. So I just would like to um, go back here to the international affidavits and I'm referring to these documents down here, okay? And I have gone through these 15 that have been submitted, which doesn't sound much on itself, but every single affidavit is almost 100 pages long. So it is extremely detailed, testifying about a lot of highly complex crimes. And I have compiled some analysis documents here, okay? So you will find, uh, you can download it here in the PDF and you can also see it here in two, um, uh, two JPEGs. Let's see, I think this one is maybe bigger, um, easier to look at here. So uh, this is the victim uh, survey here. Um, you can see the source. I gave the JIT website as the source, but they also mirrored on my stop007.org website. And these are the 15 affidavits I refer to with their affidavit number. Um, and I have just gone through and now looked at the results and done a very, very basic analysis on them, but the results are staggering. I mean, first of all, the affidavits as they stand, you can see the sex ratio here, 47 to 53% um, male versus female. This is essentially one to one the same because with such small numbers, I only have seven male um, affidavits and eight female. The statistical variation, so you have, you know, what Poissonian statistics there. So the statistical uncertainty of what you get just by random chance is varying so much that I take this to be essentially 50-50 male-female victims here testifying. Now, what's interesting is the year when people um, testified about when it started. So um, here you can see, um, actually maybe let me open the PDF version because there I can zoom in a bit more. So let's have a look here. So um, that's it. Um, now, the second column is the year the targeting started. And there you can see that it goes back all the way to the 1960s, okay, in the US. And you can almost see, you know, the progression here. You've got the US, UK, Belgium, US, you know, Russia, um, UK, USA, Canada, again, USA slash Denmark, Canada, USA, 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 and Japan. So if you had to guess, of course, looking at this, you would think, oh my God, this probably started in the US in the 1960s, and you wouldn't be too far off. But keep in mind that for that, the statistics are still very low. And also, the US has, has 350 million people. Okay, so we are now pooling, and, and I'm also broadcasting English most of the time, so you would expect to have more U.S. Um, affidavits at this stage than any others. So we can't really say from this alone that the U.S. is particularly bad. You know, as far as we know, Russia and the U.K. are just as bad, or Denmark and Canada. It just so happens that more people watch my videos on English and there are more people um, in the US than there are in the UK. So this is just to uh, explain how to understand these analysis results. But nevertheless, one of the things that you can say at this stage already, right, is that we can explain every single country that appears here because what we have that explains most of these affidavits are the five eyes. So you've got US, UK belongs to that. Um, Canada belongs to that, right? And that explains most of these. And the only odd one out from that, that are Belgium, Russia, um, Denmark, if you like, and Japan. Now, both Germany and Japan have been under heavy occupation, okay? Um, Denmark is literally just a stone throw away from Germany that has been 
under heavy occupation in this comparatively small country. So you would almost expect for criminality to wash over if you didn't make any other assumptions about the Danish royal family. And Belgium, of course, is the HQ of NATO. Okay. Now, Russia is just as keen on doing this experimentation as the US. So there are no surprises here so far. I would like to point out that there's a second page where I focus in on the countries, because if you remember, I don't just ask about the country where it started, which is this column that you've seen before. I also ask about all the countries that victims have been targeted in. And when you go through the list here, okay, here in the um, right hand column, you can see that there are all sorts of countries. So we have a lot of countries in Europe, but we also have Morocco, Ghana, Togo, Abu Dhabi, uh, Dubai, uh, Antigua. So, you know, Mexico, Peru, Zimbabwe, we've got, we've got the lot. So in other words, when you look at this, you realize it is actually global targeting that we're talking about. So victims have been assaulted in all of these countries. Now, <clears throat> at this stage, you might think, what if the tracking and harassment team follows these people abroad and they just follow them from Belgium to Morocco, say, or from the US uh, to Zimbabwe? Now, why, while that can be uh, the case, what victims also report when you listen to them in detail is that there's a very um, large local network, usually, that knows the terrain, so knows the, you know, the, the, the city and knows how to gang stalk effectively in all these territories. You know, uh, I would say that there's enough evidence, I have seen enough evidence for me to say that this is a global targeting program, okay? So this is the first hint here with the caveat that I haven't just with this alone, haven't proven that it's not a, a team following the victim, okay? For that, we need the detailed victim affidavits from which it's <clears throat> pretty obvious that it is a local um, Hamintel, so human intelligence network, stalking them, okay? So, so much about the countries. The other thing I want to say is about the um, start of targeting. If you just uh, take these um, affidavits that I have so far, um, the 15 affidavits and plot or just list <clears throat> at, in what year targeting started. You So far, we've got one case from the 1960s, one starting in the 1970s, um, none from starting in the 1980s. Now, these three with uh, just one and none um, are just natural statistical variation. Okay, here. Um, but then you have three in the, the 1990s, um, three in the 2000s and then seven in the year 2010. But now I would like to show you um, the value of these affidavits because we do have these details. And the first thing that you can already see with very, uh, you know, very quick clearly is that targeting is meant to be for life. Everybody apart from one case reports that their targeting hasn't stopped since it started. So in other words, once you get targeted, it's targeting for life. And remember, we're only uh, hearing those testimonies who survived, okay? We don't know how many people got killed, but from this alone, we can tell that targeting is for life. Most people testified about other victims. So they, they, they know that there are other people who are being victimized, typically in their family or among their friends right, or in their community. And community can mean anything. It could be, I don't know, a local geographic community. It could be a gay community. It could be an academic or scientific or engineering community, whatever. The question about community is just to try to go beyond family and friends, okay? It could be the community of veterans, you know, uh, of soldiers and so on. It doesn't matter. All I want is that you testify about you being aware about other victims. Now, what this also shows is that it's not just one person being assaulted, but an entire group. So an entire family or social circle or an entire community in, you know, whatever sense. But, um, you know, it also indicates that these targeting programs are vast. Okay, so the testimonies we get are just the tip of the iceberg. And in most affidavits, when you go through, 
in this category, they have typically ticked several boxes. So not just family, but also friends and also community and also children, you know, their children. So that's very important to note. The other thing to note is that um, surveillance, surveillance, sorry, is there in 100% of the cases, okay? And down here, you can see the percentages whereby I highlighted everything that's above 60% in bright red so surveillance is a hundred percent and here 73 percent report um housebreaking 93 percent of report stalking um and over a very long time 87 percent report hacking that's this column now financial and administrative terrorism is a lot less common but it's still um every third person suffers from that as well now the vast majority, however, report that their income is sabotaged and that their marriages are sabotaged or partnerships, okay? And then by the time we get to the directed energy weapons, <clears throat> um, about 70, over 70% 70 report that, okay? So it's very, very common. Um, Biowarfare is less common. However, implants have been detected and noted in 60% of the cases. Okay, now 67 or within statistical uncertainties, even rounded 70, experience voice to skull. So in other words, given that this is across the world, you can also tell that the voice to skull um, voice transmission system is global, right? Now, almost as many as have voice to skull also have image to skull here at um, 60%. Neurotechnology assaults are just as common as um, voice to skull. So again, 67%. And every second person, so 53%, reported, <clears throat> excuse me, um, my voice is going because, well, I think I'm being attacked because this is quite a bombshell. So <clears throat> every second person reports that their targeting is generational. So that goes hand in hand with the targeting being for life over here. So it's not just for life and it's not just in sucking in your family and children, you know, parents and children. Once you combine these two, you end up with generational targeting. Now, the other thing that you can also say with certainty here down here is that 60% report that the police is denying them help. 60% report that lawyers are denying them help, and only 20% report that doctors deny them help. However, <clears throat> if you're not being assaulted with bioweapons and implants, um, you are less likely to seek medical attention. Okay, most people do not seek medical attention for voice to skull or for hacking and stuff like that, right? Um, but nevertheless, you know, um, when you look into details of what doctors denying help actually um means <clears throat> there are a lot of offenses also indicating that targeting continues into the hospitals these are now um for the first time all court actionable documents every single affidavit has been <clears throat> excuse me every single affidavit has been submitted under oath with a signed statement of truth whereby the, the signature has been witnessed by a person entitled to administer oaths, and the affidavit overall has been submitted with photo identification with the serial number covered up so that, you know, the, these um, ID documents accumulating in my inbox cannot be used for ID fraud. But should anybody <clears throat> like a government ever doubt these results or court, they can check these IDs. <clears throat> and of course, they can match up the image and the address and then find out the serial number so for them it's not it's absolutely not necessary to have it to um confirm the veracity of the identification now all of this taken together is you know the highest standard an affidavit can ever attain in a in a court of law so we have satisfied that those 15 affidavits have absolutely satisfied that okay so um, also, signing it before a person entitled to administer oaths, oaths means that that person checks that, you know, you are clearly of sound mind, you're not raving and cartwheeling, you know, from madness. And also, most importantly, 
you are, <clears throat> excuse me, testifying under your own volition, okay? Nobody is forcing you. Nobody's holding a gun to your hand. So <clears throat> with these affidavits, nobody can doubt that this targeting program is happening, that it is for life, that it is generational, that it involves weapons of mass destruction and targeted torture um, of victims with military weaponry. So at this stage, and given that the affidavits are coming from uh, you know three different continents, I just um, decided to inform the press. So I have um, compiled the press release and I have contacted an absolutely vast number of press outlets. So here's a new page, it calls in, it's called Interviews and Media Reports. And you get to this page from my front page in the news section. And it's the third link called press release number one. And um, also what you find here on the press release page is a PDF document with all the press um, outlets that I've contacted with the precise email that I used. So should you ever wish to have your own press um, releases, you will find an email list here. I've already done the work for you. But in turn, if you find a press outlet that's not on here, I would really appreciate <clears throat> if you could help me expand this list uh, to incorporate more press outlets. That would be much appreciated. This is the text I just wrote. Dear journalists, dear media outlets, I'm writing to notify you of a new court actionable documents regarding crimes against huma humanity committed against North Americans, Europeans, and other nations. <clears throat> After the launch of the International Victim Survey at the end of last year, which was concerned with the criminal use of directed energy weapons, non-consensual implants, neurotechnology, and organized stalking ter terror networks, 15 people have now come forward and testified extensively in great detail under oath about the crimes against humanity committed, committed against them and others. Their affidavits can be found here. You can find a link to the original appeal on that page. Uh, the analysis results from those 15 detailed affidavits, which prove in a directly court actionable format, the use of weapons of, um, weapons of mass destruction on the civilian population around the world by their own secret services and military, and can be found here. Thank you for taking note of these facts and reporting them to your networks. In order to stop this modern day Holocaust, us victims need your help. As I'm writing these lines, I too am being tortured with non-consensual implants, like thousands of people, including countless children around the world. Best wishes, Dr. Catherine Horton. And um, I think what's very, very important for us to, um, to keep in mind is that these are uh, crimes against humanity, certainly in Europe and the US for historical reasons. In the case of crimes against humanity, there is a duty to report, there is also a duty to act um, from all the police uh, services. <clears throat> and now I now have evidence that they refuse to act, which means that they are criminally um, liable for um, all the harm done to victims as well. Okay. And um, I want the press to understand that just around the corner, they too will be held criminally liable should they fail to report. And with this, I do not mean those alternative sources. Uh, the, the final page of that list, because ironically, those um, who are smaller have done much more work in bringing this to the fore. I am now talking about the national press of the US, of the UK, of Germany, uh, of France, of Belgium, and Switzerland, whereby the last two countries, I didn't actually have time to include that many. But we do have, you know, millions and millions of people being informed by those um, daily newspapers and by the daily newspapers refusing to report about the you know torturing to death of their own uh you know um uh, compatriots they are actually criminally um what's what's the word i'm looking for they will be held criminally liable before too long unless they really start reporting so the reason I'm um, coming out with this broadcast is because I wanted it to get out there that um, certainly for the victims, you now know that you can take those affidavits and what kind of stuff you can prove with those affidavits. <clears throat> so I encourage you to download the affidavits that I have put up 
along with the confirmation of their validity that I've um, you know, put up there and signed, and along with this PDF document I've made of the analysis results based on just the 15 people who have um, testified so far. But um, the other thing I also want to say to the victims is that now I hope you see the value of these affidavits. Nobody, absolutely nobody can deval um, devalidate these affidavits unless they too write um, uh, an affidavit um, that is signed with under oath with a statement of truth with a um, witness signature to say that one of these affidavits isn't valid for this and that reason. Let's say the person doesn't exist and the ID is forged or whatever, stuff that I can't really cannot guard against, right? I cannot guard against CIA agents forging US driver's license. I just can't. So, you know, for um, to disable any of those affidavits, uh, we would need something like that. And unless somebody contests um, the affidavits in detail with those very high standards, um, then these uh, stand, okay? And now with this um, public uh, release based on court actionable um, evidence, right, that stands up in court in certainly the US uh, and the UK and the European jurisdictions, um, you two can now start going around referring to this press release, referring to those results, they are 100% valid and nobody, absolutely nobody, can now question you on the veracity of these facts, okay? And should anybody have any questions of what exactly was meant by directed energy weapon attacks, what sort of symptoms, what sort of type of attacks, they're very welcome to go into detail, um, uh, into the details of the um, affidavits and see what particular box was ticked in the uh, respective section. I have included here at the very top the item number, okay, so the very first line, item number 1.2, 1.9, 1.12, and so on, means the item number in the affidavit. And the last three have two because um, the section 78 is the denial of help section where all of these are again repeated. Okay, so you will find this information either using this number overall, or if you want to have detailed information, you use the three numbers below. But this is all really self-explanatory once you know that these item numbers refer to the item numbers inside the affidavit. But just keep in mind that, for example, from the UK, I, I only have two affidavits. Okay, so for court action in the United Kingdom, I really would like to have more affidavits. If you're a victim, please take the time to fill these out. Um, I am starting a court case. I, I personally need you to back me up in the UK, but there are many, many more victims who need your testimony. And um, I hope I demonstrated to you the power of this affidavit, uh, the fact that you can trust me, that I really just upload stuff um, anonymously and nobody will get to know your identity. Um, and also that I'm absolutely serious about bringing these crimes um, to the attention of the general um, public and having them shut down. I am also very, very serious about um, bringing the police officers to court and to justice who have actively covered up and condoned and aid aided and abetted uh, the systematic torture of victims, including children, even though they were told. And uh, with police officers, um, the ones who are also frontline, they have to know that just because their boss tells them to ignore something is not good enough in a court of law. It is not good enough for crimes against humanity anywhere in the Western world because of the precedent of the Nazis. And these are, again, Nazi crimes. So every single police officer who refused, I had you know, several um, in my local police station uh, near Zurich, um, they are now going to be up in court by name. And I encourage you all to collect the names of all those people, especially officials who refuse to help you because their names will be up in court very, very soon. Okay? Um, you know, I would like to encourage all these victims to have the strength and the courage to come forward because now this is just blowing wide, wide open and the point of no return has now been passed a long time ago at some point uh, last year. 
So now this is really breaking apart. I have already had one media outlet, uh, Sputnik News, already race ahead of the pack and ask me for an interview. And, you know, for once, unlike all the other interviews I gave, um, you know, this media outlet actually published it in a mainstream media outlet. So you, you will find my interview on Sputnik News. And um, that is already, um, you know, uh, it shows that this is <clears throat> this is now blowing wide open. And I think those journalists already understood. And I think that because um, Sputnik News, even though this was a radio show in Edinburgh, um, where my interview was shown, Sputnik News overall is, um, I think um, it's from Russia, right? So uh, the control is on Russia and not part of the, um, uh, you know, the me media conglomerate that we know here in the Western world is controlled by the Council on Foreign Relations, um, which is a secret society that has arisen out of, uh, I think it was previously called the Round Table or something. So um, we know that our media outlets are under deadlock here, but I think at some point individual editors who uh, hold their jobs and their income, income streams dearer then the ask covering exercises of their paymasters will also break ranks. So they are already the first indications. And when these press outlets break ranks, I want you to be able to testify, to be able to um, attract media attention, to be able to show your affidavit and your case details. So I really encourage all victims to get your house in order, get your evidence in order, in order and please start using this affidavit template as maybe your first run through and your first, um, you know, draft, fill that out. Um, and the reason for that is if you put your evidence in the same format, you can compare your case one on one to all the other people who also testify. When you can compare your cases quickly, it's much easier to find people to pair up with to start a class action. Okay. Or, to find people to pair up with just to support each other as you're going through the court process individually. But at some point, all victims, I think, have to have a court process because that's the only way to actually get compensation. Please, um, you can pass this press release around. Uh, you are also very welcome to uh, draw up um, contact lists for things like psychiatrists in your region, big regional hospitals, police stations in your region and in your country, um, legal firms maybe in your country. I would like to collect themed email lists, okay? And what works really well is, is if you make an Excel table where you um, use pretty much what I did. So, um, you know, the name, if it's individuals or if it's a police station, the name of the police station, where it is, um, then the email and then any other comments that you have. If you put it in these kind of Excel tables, or open office cal calculator tables, um, then it makes it very easy for me to process. And then we can um, put out these um, press contact um, lists and start really, um, you know, giving them the information they need, okay, um, all around the world. So I ask you to help me with the email lists. I hope you take this as your inspiration. I hope you can see that stuff is actually happening. And um, And you can also, the other thing you can do is you can you can take the uh, press uh, list, so the press email list that I've um, shown you there, because that has the full list of every single outlet with the precise contact form or contact email that I used in it. Everything that has a tick next to it, I have contacted exactly as it says in the form. And you can put that in your court case to, to prove, for example, if you're in France or Germany or the UK and the US, you can prove that the media in your country has been contacted, <clears throat> but has not reported. So you can really use it as ammunition for your litigation because every victim has a claim against the press and has a claim against their local police station. So I hope I have given you now lots of evidence and lots of motivation. And I've, I hope I've now shown you the incredible power of these affidavits. And I really hope I've motivated more and more victims to come forward and take part in this because every, remember, every affidavit that I upload, the more they are there, the more people take courage and start filling um, theirs out as well. And my experience is that for every affidavit that goes up, about 10 people get motivated and contact me over social media or, or over email to tell me that they are in the process of filling it out. 
okay, or that they have started. Please, if you um, like my work and if you want me to work harder or more or do even more for you or your country, then please, please support me. Please support me on my Patreon page. I am just reliant on crowdfunding and it is basically you who is paying for my work. So if you would like to support me, <clears throat> please go to patreon.com forward slash stop 007. Please, please sign up. And you can sign up with as, as little as $1, but I generally recommend that, um, you know, for targets, please support me with $5, please, please, please. And if you have a job or if you are, you know, run your own company, please consider donating more, you know. I leave it up to the honesty of every person to say how much they think my money, uh, my, my, how much money my work is worth to them, you know. Is it worth uh, $20 per month for you to know that somebody's fighting crimes against humanity? You know, or is it only worth $10 per month? Um, you know, it is entirely up to you because you know your financial situation and you can assess it freely. But please, please donate at least um, $5 because if many people donate, you know, just five per month, which I keep saying is just per month, right? As if you bought two coffees. You know, you invite me for coffee, you pay for your own coffee for 250 and my coffee for 250 That's all it is. Can you afford that once per month if we could meet? Probably. So please, instead of us wasting it on expensive coffee, please support me. Okay? Because right now here in Europe, there's absolutely no one, sadly, there's absolutely no one doing this extensive amount of work of, um, you know, doing outreach sending out press releases, making, uh, running the entire um, global victim survey and supporting court cases as an expert witness, okay? And so far, I have not been paid for any of the court cases where I appeared as an expert witness, you know, con uh, so in proportion with what I've actually done, right? I have received zero, um, you know, for those things. But nevertheless, while that is fair enough because the victims are heavily asset stripped, I absolutely need the support of those people who are not victims and those people who also would like to have these crimes fought, but maybe don't know how to, or maybe don't have the time to do it themselves. You know, please do that. And also if you have rich relatives or you know of any people who are self-employed or run their own business, you know, typically they tend to be rather well off. Um, well, they also have to understand that what I'm fighting is also a surveillance network that is deeply involved in industrial um, espionage, in IP theft, in this targeted destruction of entrepreneurs. If they want this entire criminal architecture shut down, that is most likely also preying on them and causing them financial harm, then please support me now. And please support me, pull your weight pull your weight because you also have to kind of cross subsidize all the many victims who, I'm, who I need to help and need to help into court for us to be able to shut down this entire global crime cartel. Okay. So thank you very, very much for listening. Spread this news, be your own news organization, use your power. You've got more power, power than you ever had in the history of mankind. Use your networks, mobilize your networks, get them on the case and spread the information. Thank you very much for listening and bye for now.